Welcome back, folks, to World of Warships Legends. I'm Super Dave, and today we are going to do the build and play guide on the Musashi. And why do I sound so excited? I just It's a historic ship, and I am a uh, kind of a history hobby fan of, of naval battles, so this one has definitely more significance to others. Now, this is not a history lesson, so let's continue on. Now, for the uh, commander on this build, I actually use Musashi. And the reason I do is if you guys have played Japanese battleships, I don't have to tell you how accurate, you know, how the guns can be a little bit trolly on Japanese accuracy. And, I have decided, and I've switched now to Musashi on all my Japanese battleships. And it has made a big difference. In fact, that's why I chose this game today to show you uh, this build because it does help out quite a bit. Now, if you don't have Musashi, this is Tagagi right here, the normal battleship, Japanese battleship commander. You can see without a guys, it is in fact Takio Tagagi. Um, and they do have, as you can see here, they have the similar perks or skills. There is a little bit of a difference between the two of them. Uh, if if you're looking, uh, this one has Phoenix. You get a little bit more health by the repair party off of Tagagi. And a slight bit more range. And when I say a slight bit, it's only 3%, which is, is a help. But the trade-off with Musashi with this is a few things. The base trait, main battery shell dispersion while spotted in the air is 8%, or is, I can get up to 8%. I'm one away from doing that. I don't know if I ever will. I don't know if it needs it. That is significant because if you go in here and you look, this thing has four spotter planes on this build. So that's going to be eight of your shots are going to have uh, better, much better accuracy. Like a lot better accuracy. And uh, so with the perks, you know, that helps already right there. So the other reason I choose her is on the four skill set. We'll get to there in a second. Flammable cannoneer, gyrating drill bits. It does... Uh, you know, honestly, I just take that for the AP damage. I don't like losing the battleship speed for flanks, but it is what it is. Uh, and that is the same on Tagagi. They are exactly the same marksmanship until right here. Instead of reaching out XXL and getting 3% on our main battery range. And honestly, I think this fires at 19.2 right now. So that's plenty enough range as it is. There is this wonderful perk here, which is going to sound real crazy, um, but this I'm not so worried about the spotter duration, although that can help Japanese battleships because uh, getting that extra boost if you have a long reload. Now, Yamato, Musashi, you know, uh, Hayuga, most of the most popular America are the Japanese battleships. Uh, that spotter duration isn't going to help you much because you're already going to get two shots off in one spotter plane. However, the Battleship AP Fuse Timer, shorting that 20% is huge because, as you guys probably know, Japanese have the tendency to have the biggest guns at their tier, which also means they overpen a lot, and this does help quite a bit with that. Um, now, we're not in the match that I showcase today. I don't get the best showcase of that because we're not really, there's not a whole lot of cruisers, and we're not up close and personal with a lot of ships in this match. I'm kind of showing off how it is nice to have that dispersion and help with the accuracy that can be a little trolly within the uh, Japanese, um, the battleship uh the whole battleship, all the Japanese battleships pretty much have it for the most part. So let's get into the upgrades. I have dispersion because if you don't on Japanese, you're crazy. Sometimes they're really accurate. Other times they're not. Uh, you, steering gears mod 2 because 
I am normally super aggressive in battleships. You'll see me in a patient match today. But normally I'm super aggressive in battleships, particularly Japanese battleships. Uh, and so normally I do take rudder shift for dodging torpedoes and detectability. And because I'm so aggressive, I actually do like the concealment mod. Not as much for the detectability, but for the incoming fire dispersion. Uh, as I generally am the focus, <laughs> the, one of the main targets on the map when I'm in a battleship. Uh, and for uh, the last modification, Maiden Battery Mod 3, uh, you don't have enough AA on this, and we'll sadly talk about that in a minute to really do the that. You might as well get the re reload down, time down. And the Traverse is not the worst on these ships, so it's not that bad. Uh, you know, it's not a huge penalty to take that 15%. Uh, repair, you do get two heals. They're not, they're not terrible. Um, but, uh, you know, you're, they're not like the British big heals. Uh, spotter plane, and you can see we get 36 seconds on this. And we get uh, four of them, which is actually kind of handy. And if you want, you could do a pain scheme, but this already does come with the Type 9 camo on it to help with incoming dispersion and detectability. Now, specs on the ship. This is what a little bit annoys me. And I was not going to mention this because this is not supposed to be a history, uh, history lesson. But the fact that the Musashi is at... Uh, tier 8 in the uh, <laughs> Yamato is at legendary tier bothers me <laughs> we'll talk about it a little bit here part of the reason is hit points in real life <laughs> took 259 planes to take down Musashi uh, 4 waves of planes <laughs> and it took 17 bombs and 7 or in uh is it six or seven? Six torpedo hits? You know, so 17 bombs, dive bombs, and six, six torpedo hits to take this thing down. This thing under hit points should just say hit infinite. All right. But it does have 8,500, which is respectable at tier five. Or at tier eight, not tier five. That'd be crazy at tier five. Um, as you can see, artillery, it is the big old Japanese 18.1s, um, which is pretty good. You know, you're not really going to have anything uh, bigger in the game. Not that I know of currently, anyway. And it does a lot of damage. It's a, it's a Yamato-class battleship. That's what they're good at in this game. AA defense. This sadly, sadly, is it, it, it scratches the nerve or uh, pinches the nerve of of history for me. So, Musashi in real life actually had better AA had, than Yamato, and in this game it is inverted as well as Musashi actually got radar before uh, Yamato as well. So. Uh, but this thing has no AA. Do not let this fool you. Um, <laughs> 57 at tier 8 is you might as well have a guy with a slingshot on the back of your ship. Flinging rocks at planes. Maneuverability. Uh, this, with the, you can see the taking the rudder ship did help because this does kind of have not an ideal rudder. The other thing is taking that 10% hit on the generating drill bits on the maximum speed and detectability by C is 13.8. Honestly, it's a battleship. You're not sneaking up on a dead moose in open water, as always. All right, so armor, as you can see, uh, we got a 32 millimeter bow in, um, I, I think at this point of, for most of you guys playing the game, I don't have to explain that to all, you can bow tank anything in the game outside of Musashi and Yamato with this. Uh, so you can bow tank if you need to. I wouldn't recommend it. It's got good side armor, as long as you don't go flat broadside. 
if you go flat broadside, you will completely be eliminated in this ship. It does have good, a good, very good belt, but you will be eliminated very quickly. In fact, I think it's one of the easier ones when it's broadside to actually go ahead and eliminate. So we're going to take a look at here at the Citadel, and that is why. It is an exposed Citadel that is very high up, and one other thing it has is, is we'll put the... Uh, plate uh, our this back up here just so you guys can see let's get the bow armor and you can see uh, there is this weird angle that it has on the cheek of the ship where it goes narrow and if you hit that cheek of that ship you can dev strike it up close real easy uh if you get it if the, you get enough angle to get through that front bow or even the rear stern um and you can get eliminated real quick. So it can take an absolute beating if you know how to angle with it. As we go ahead and start this match and check who we're up against, I do want to say it is disclaimer time. This is a beginner's guide to help out people just learning this ship or uh, learning the game in general. This is not for professional gamers that know everything there is to know about everything. There is also multiple ways to build and play ships, so opinions will vary. I am just a above average player. I don't claim to be the best player in the world. I just am a pretty darn good player, so I do make mistakes. You're going to see some in this match. And also, you didn't come to this video to see how to pronounce names, as I am very terrible at slaughtering other beautiful languages it's almost an art form so keep that in mind when you're watching this guys now we are at shards and i am absolute bottom tier there's only uh, uh the most of this room is in fact legendary tier so uh a few things because this map is shards and uh, the middle can be chaos and also if you control the middle it can definitely help the match a lot more, even more than other maps, I feel. Uh, I am going to be very patient on this map, uh, and I want to kind of help and stay at the middle. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get up kind of behind this island because the other team spawns on the back side of B, um, right where you can see uh, the uh, sh uh, sh Shifa <laughs> uh, spawns uh, and... Honestly, I don't want to get into a secondary battle with him, so I'm going to be careful. And there's a Montana there, which at range I'm a little nervous with, but up close I'm not nearly as, as, as worried about. But because there is two of them and every, you know, uh, the battleship is leaving my flank, I will throw a set out there and uh, use our spotter plane. And we do get to... Of our spotter planes and you can see uh, we hit more than how half of our shells now they didn't all do damage because I didn't aim them very well but you can see that accuracy did help right there already you know sometimes you might only get one hit at that range to be honest at 19 2 in a Yamato class battleship and we shoot six down at the um, Alaska and we get three of them to hit now. I feel like I was a little unlucky there, but I'm gonna be careful here I'm not just going full rushing in Because uh, there's uh, Shimakaze right there and I want to be careful and normally I am super aggressive as a player but because I am bottom tier and This map if you get too aggressive in the middle of the map, you just get wiped out um, So I am being super patient and I'm glad I uh, did slow down there. Me them torps probably would have definitely got me. And I'm trying to take a, pay attention to both sides of the map. And I'm putting myself in a spot to help. Now normally I would shoot that destroyer. But at 50 kilometers I'm not going to probably hit it in a battleship. And with that being so, the Alaska being so close to being dead. As you see we get our citadel and it destroy and kill it. Uh, that was the smarter move at that moment right there. I start taking hits from the left, and I do kill that Napoli with my rear turret of justice. That's one thing I will do quite a bit. I will use my rear turret separately than my front, particularly on a 
two uh, A1 one setup, so meaning two front turrets and one rear turret. I will a lot of times, like the Iowa as well, use my rear turret differently on a different target. Now, uh, that Italian battleship, I don't remember which one it was, just went behind that uh, mountain, and he's going to play this Marco Polo. There he is. This Marco Polo is going to play a terrible game of hide-and-seek with me for a, a majority of this match. And even though I'm not getting the world's biggest damage total right now, I am helping keeping people out of the middle of the map. And I did eliminate a guy from A. I did eliminate a guy from, you know, in the middle of the map. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hel helping both sides, and I'm trying to be very cautious because you can get overwhelmed in the middle of this map pretty quick, easy. And the fact that I'm still... There he goes again. He's trying to peek out. And um, we're just going to let him go this time. And, you know, I, a lot of times I like to also see what people's habits are. Um, and this player, that player over there, not particularly uh the best player because he just does the same thing repeatedly and by the time this time i know exactly what he's doing so i line up and hit now i don't know if i have great luck on this shot or not and again this is why i'm not racing in because that shimikaze if i would normally been as aggressive as i'd like and we take a lot of health off of marco polo there um uh Normally, I would be aggressive and go in. And with that Shimakaze there, he would have easily wrecked me. So, the Marco Polo, uh, finally, I think, you know, decides, I'm going to take a break from this, because it's not smart. And he's also gotten the attention to some people. And I know he's going to poke back out at some point. So, I am keeping an eye on him. And I do have my spotter plane ready, because... I do want to eliminate him. He does. He is helping their team in the middle of the map, kind of. Uh, well, he, helping the middle a little bit in controlling, uh, like the entryway to C. So I do want to keep an eye on him. Um, but I also need to be wary of the entirety of the map and not just that. So right now we're losing this match, and you know now we're getting uh, the. Uh, B cap here, uh, and I want to come up a little bit because if that other destroyer comes up, I try. I want to be in a position to actually help out, uh, you know, because he is taking the cap, and I want to make sure he gets it. And a lot of times, destroyers will poke their nose up. As the Shimikaze Dev Strikes are Alaska, and you can see it, it here now. We have the Montana that we're going to start to engage with because. Again, Montana, it is super accurate. Even at the, even at real far ranges, the thing can be a pain in the butt to deal with. Now, I like to play Montana close in, but at range where a lot of people play it, it is super effective with its accuracy. So, we are going to take, as you can see, the uh, I believe it's a Shefflin came around the corner or Sheflin. And he did get torped, but so I'm not too worried about him at this particular moment. But I do want to kind of shield myself from the left side of the map if I can up against this island. Um, I do get unlucky on that salvo at range, but for the most part, I had pretty decent luck with accuracy. You would never normally want to do this um, with a you know a Yamato or a Musashi, and I shot one over and realized oh it's gonna hit the mountain so i am actually gonna go ahead and just shoot at yamato see if i get a lucky citadel on the front of his ship while he's sitting there and i don't but i do knock out his guns and i do actually all three shells hit which is pretty cool actually all three that i sent at him did actually hit even though we didn't get a ton of damage we did knock out his gun which is pretty important and you'll see I'm kind of using the auto aim to check if he's moving. That's not really the aim itself. I'm more checking to see if he started moving forward. And here come the tarp. So I start to back up a little bit. And as that Yamato starts moving, I want to kind of focus on him. I didn't know it at the time, but our Borgo is a solid player over there. 
and you will see in a minute here, I think it's right here where the Yamato just, he loses all of, all of his health to the poor goal. Um, there it is right there. That That's what I mean by getting broadside to anything in the Yamato. He's lucky that wasn't a dev strike because if you can see on the map, he literally gave the whole broadside up to the Borgo, and uh, that's not good, but I'm glad the Borgo took advantage of it. Now, I want to move up to help with uh, with the Montana, because, you know, that is one of my favorite battleships and can really change a game if there's a good player in it, so we want to get rid of him, too. And now, I notice on the map, I remember this at this point, I remember that I seen the uh, Marco Polo come out a little bit. I do want to try to get this Montana dead, and we do, in fact, kill it. So I am helping on multiple sides here. Now, uh, now my, my uh, you know, I'm being patient. I'm not being super aggressive. And now, because I'm not, is the threats that were keeping me from being aggressive are gone. I definitely want to move now. The problem is there's nothing to move on on the right hand of the side of the map, so I gotta take a while to back this big old girl up and get over and help out over there because there is uh, the the Roma and I believe the uh, new Russian tier eight battleship, the one that I had a world record XP record in for like I don't know a couple days, yeah. but anyway. We're going to start to move up because you can see over there, I believe that's in Ohio to our left. Uh, our Ohio is taking on two people, and I do really want to help him out. There is the Marco Polo, and this is where the, I do believe, the game of hi, uh, this hide-and-seek game he'd been playing with me has finally met his match. As you can see, oh, I did not get the kill there. I thought I got the kill on the Marco Polo, to be honest, but I, I definitely didn't. Um, but anyway, as you can see, uh, I'm not too worried about him. I want to help on this guy because, like I said, our Ohio is, you know, he's got less, our Ohio's got less health. And we're going to start to move in there. Uh, now... I do kind of check if this guy's moving forward or back, and I do kind of guess okay. Oh, there is the Marco Polo. And honestly, I feel like this fight with the 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 Russian ship should have went a little bit better. Oh, and there I take the shot, and of course Ohio gets him. Um, and I think, yeah, at this point we're basically got it won, so I'm just going to charge up. I actually thought at this point um, the destroyer was still on the right hand side. I figured it was going to try to get caps, uh, but he is off to our right. Um, you can see they start spotting him on the map, and that uh, the the uh, Rosia I don't know how to pronounce that thing starts backing up. We're going to try to get some help on the uh, some shells on this guy and help him out. But you can see. A nine, we hit four. That's not too bad at these long distances. You know, hitting half your shells in the Yamato at, at you know, pretty, you know, 16, 18 kilometers like we've been shooting at isn't terrible. And, that, uh, you know, uh, with the spotter plane, it really helps having that extra dispersion. Uh, in we hit two there. So, you know, it, you can still troll you, but I feel like it's better having that extra dispersion in spotter planes because when you don't have it, you have moments like that where you only hit two shells. Now, I'm trying to close a distance because uh, when I know there's only one target and one person that can really hurt me you know, on the map without torpedoes, it becomes a pretty easy fight. The problem is, is you know, I don't have the speed to really get there. Um, but we are going to help our teammate out. I don't know if that was the Ohio to my left. I can't remember. Um, there's kind of been Ohio's everywhere in matches lately. And we will go ahead and take another shot at him. I don't know if we got... Uh, well, we only had six shells. We hit him with five. So not too bad of a salvo. 
And uh, yeah, the uh, Ohio does finish him. And we will speed this part up to the end of the match. But this is a good match for me because I was being patient. And it was, you know, I wasn't just uh, doing the Yamato charge in and die thing like a lot of people do. And as you can see there, we win on points. And I do help my team out quite a bit. And even though I'm not top of the leaderboard, I am quite high up there, especially in the legendary tier match. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. Anyway, hopefully this helps you guys out, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.